Hi, this is Amr Abdugawad, and we're going to discuss today Montesia fracture dislocation. This is the most common missed fracture in the emergency department, so we're giving this lecture so you can detect that fracture and don't miss it. So what are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to identify the normal characteristics of the elbow radiographs in children, and then we're going to show the radiographic findings of Montesia fracture dislocation uh, so you can identify these cases from the x-ray. And finally, we're going briefly to outline the treatment of Montesia fracture dislocation. A good source that you can use is this book, uh, a Pediatric Orthopedic, a handbook for primary care physician by myself and Dr. Naga. So what is Montesia fracture dislocation? Montesia fracture dislocation is fracture of the proximal ulna, which is the upper part of the ulna. And in the same time, there will be dislocation of the radial head from its articulation with the proximal radio ulna joint and with the radio capitella joint, as we're going to see later on. So what will be the clinical presentation? A child will have pain, swelling, and deformity of the proximal forearm. And uh, it's very important uh, when you diagnose Montesia fracture dislocation is to assess the posterior interosseous nerve uh, because um, there is possible affection of this nerve uh, by compression by the radial head. So uh, ask the child to extend the uh, interpharyngeal joint of the thumb uh, and see if he can uh, hyperextend the interpharyngeal joint of the thumb. If he cannot, that's an indication of posterior interosseous nerve pulse. This is an eight-year-old with a Montesia fracture dislocation, and I'm going to start here examining his uh, posterior interosseous nerve uh, by asking him to dorsiflex the thumb, and he will not be able to do that, um, indicating that this uh, child has a posterior interosseous nerve injury. Let's see the video again. Uh, I'm asking him here to dorsiflex the thumb, but he is not able to do that. Uh, that indicates that he has a posterior interosseous nerve injury. So this is an x-ray of a three-year-old boy fell down on his elbow, presented in the ER with the swollen, painful uh, elbow x-rays were taken. You can obviously see the fracture here of the proximal part of the ulna, uh, and it's actually here a uh, very proximal up, affecting that part of the ulna, which is called the olecranon. Um, however, if you look closely to the radius, the radius should have a different relation with the capitellum. So this piece of uh, bone is uh, part of the distal part of the humerus, and we this is the capitellum, which uh, is the part of the bone that articulate with the head of the radius. Uh, so in order to know exactly what's going on, x-rays of the normal side uh, was taken. So this is the x-ray of the contralateral elbow of the other elbow of the same child that we saw the x-ray before. So if you see, of course, here there is no fracture. And if you draw a line here from the radius, that line is intersecting the capitellum. So this is the capitellum here, and this is the radius, and this is the normal relationship. This is the normal elbow. If you re, uh, draw a line here, you will see this line bisecting the capitellum in the lateral view and also in the other views. You can see here it's bisecting the capitellum, and you can see here it's bisecting the capitellum. So let's put the both x-rays here. So these two are for the normal elbow, this two for the elbow that the child fell down. And you can obviously see again the fracture here of the olecranon. Here, if you draw a line from the radius, it will not bisect the capitellum. And if you draw a line here from the radius, that will bisect the capitellum. So you can see obviously here the comparison between the affected elbow and the normal elbow. And you can see that this radius actually dislocated from its articulation with the capitellum and with articulation of the proximal radio ulnar joint. So this will make this condition not simple ulna fracture, but this is Montagia fracture dislocation. So again, have a look here. I want you to have this uh, picture very well clear in your mind. So when you see this X-ray in the ER, you don't miss it. This radius, draw a line, it's bisecting the capitellum. This is normal. This radius, draw a line, it's not bisecting the capitellum. So this is Montagia fracture dislocation. This is not simple ulna fracture. This needs urgent uh, orthopedic consultation and need uh, closed reduction. If not, that will result in sequelae for this child. So draw a line from here, it's not bisecting the capitellum. So this child was given the diagnosis of Montagia fracture dislocation and urgent orthopedic consult was done. So I went there to the ER and we did closed reduction for this child. You can see here after the closed reduction, here is the radius and you can see here is this, this small part is the radial head. 
uh, uh, it's just starting ossification. So you can see here, if you draw a line from the radial head, it's bisecting here the capitellum. So here is the uh, AP view, here is the lateral view after the close reduction, you still can see the fracture, but the fracture itself will heal and remodel, it's not a problem. Uh, however, the dislocation was reduced. If you draw a line here from the radius, it will bisect the capital. So here in this slide, I'm showing you the picture before and after the reduction. So this is the child before the reduction. Here is the radius. If you draw the line here, it's not bisecting the capitellum. Here is the radius. If you draw the line here, it is bisecting the capitellum. So this x-ray shows reduction of the deformity, reduction of the dislocation of the radiant head, because if you, show the, if you draw the line here, it's bisecting the capitellum. However, if you draw the line here, it's not bisecting the capitellum. So this is before the reduction, this is after reduction. I'm repeating this many times because I don't want you to miss uh, this X-ray when you see that in the ER. If you draw a line from the radius, it should bisect the capitellum. Here it's bisecting after the reduction. Here it was not bisecting before the reduction. This is the same X-ray of the child. Three weeks later, you see the fracture of the olecranon had healed completely, and you see the radius now um, is, is still maintaining its reduction. It's still pointing to the capitellum, uh, maintaining the reduction. So this is another case of Montagia fracture dislocation, so you can gain more experience in detecting that X-ray. So if you see here, there is an obvious fracture of the approximal part of the ulna. It's, you can see here in the AP, and you can see here in the lateral view. Um, however, if you look closely to the radius now, if you draw a line from the radius here, it's not close to the capitellum. Also, if you, if you draw a line here over the radius proximal part, it's not bisecting the capitellar head. So this is also another case of Montagia fracture dislocation. The direction here is different than the direction that we saw before. Before the radial head was going uh, superior to the capitellum. Here the radial head is going inferior or distal to the capitellum. So, so close reduction was obtained, so the ulna fracture now is aligned, and more important now is the radial head. Uh, you can see the radial head now is aligned with the capitellum, both in the lateral view and in the AP view. Uh, you can see that uh, the radial head now is uh, pointing towards the capitellum, uh, so reduction of both the ulna fracture and the radial head was obtained. So another case of Montagia, this is a two-year-old uh, girl with the fracture of her uh, ulna here. And if you see the radius, the proximal radius is not pointing towards the capitellum, it's pointing uh, superior to the capitellum. However, a close reduction was not able to be done in this case, so this patient was taken to the OR. Uh, a wire was uh, introduced to her through her ulna that um, reduced the, the fracture of the ulna and in the same time reduced the radial head towards the capitellum. So after we took her to the OR, because we were not, be able, we were not able to get close reduction, uh, we applied the wire to maintain reduction of the uh, ulna fracture and then the radial head now is reduced towards the capitellum. So if you draw a line from the radial head, it will be pointing towards the capitellum. So after we saw multiple examples of Montagia fracture dislocation, let me just show you this case quickly. Uh, this is a case of an eight-year-old girl presented to the clinic with deformity of the elbow and pain with activity. And obviously you can see here the x-ray showed that she had missed Montagia. This actual child had one year ago fracture of the ulna uh, as it was described in the ER. Obviously it was not only a fracture of the ulna, it was Montagia fracture dislocation that was missed. And uh, now the small uh, a small problem that could have been uh, treated easily uh, at the time of the injury became a big problem and in order to uh, fix this girl she had to go through multiple surgeries. So this child needs osteotomy of the radius, osteotomy of the ulna, bone graft, uh, open reduction of the elbow, multiple procedures, uh, big surgeries uh, that all could, be, could have been avoided if she was treated appropriately from the start. So next time you see a child in the ER with fracture of the ulna, always assist the relation of the radius to the radius head in all views and if you see the line uh, going from the radial head not crossing the capitellum uh, this is not a simple ulnar fracture it's montagia fracture dislocation so please don't miss that fracture in the ear thank you very much all my videos are for educational purpose only please consult your doctor before any decision thank you